Hi, friends. I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. Back in 1939, Winston Churchill famously described the Soviet Union as a riddle wrapped inside of an enigma, inside a mystery. Well, I'm not so sure that any empirical state of affairs is as utterly mysterious as Winston Churchill described the Soviet Union as being, but I do know that many people who believe in God would say about God what Churchill said about the Soviet Union, that God is a riddle inside an enigma, inside a mystery, that human reason and imagination are utterly incapable of saying anything meaningful about God, and that all that one can do is to maintain a reverential silence when asked what God might be like. I respect that reverence that these people show to God, but I think that we can know something about God and we can speak meaningfully about God, at least up to a certain point. So the question before us today is, is God incomprehensible? Or can we know something about God? And my friends, there's really a lot riding on the way in which we respond to this question. The 18th century skeptic David Hume said, very correctly in my opinion, that if believers can't say anything about the God in which they believe, their position really is no different functionally from that of the agnostic or the atheist. Now, Let's go back to St. Augustine in the 5th century. He famously said, Si comprehendus non est Deus. If you comprehend it, it can't be God. If you think you can utterly define God, you're mistaken. That would seem to point to the conclusion that Augustine thinks that all we can do is to remain silent when it comes to discourse about God, but I don't think that's what he's saying at all. His comprehendus is derived from the Latin verb prehendere, which means to grasp or to clutch, and the prefix com in front of it means total or all. So what Augustine is really saying is something like this. If you think you have totally understood God, if you think you have grasped everything that there is to know about God, you're mistaken. You're talking about something other than God. But in saying this, what Augustine doesn't at all imply is that God is completely unknowable. He is warning us against the hubris or the arrogance of presuming that our finite reason can completely grasp the infinite. So having said that, how can we come to know something about God? Well, I think three things can be said in that regard. The first way in which we can come to know something about God is simply by the use of common sense. If we believe in God, my friends, we know that God cannot be certain things. God can't be a toothbrush. God can't be a coffee table or the mug of coffee that you put on that coffee table. God can't be an animal like a giraffe. God cannot be an element like the wind or the fire or the water or the earth. This common sense approach to what God can't be if God exists is really a reflection of a rather sophisticated theology known as apophactic theology. The apophactic theologian tries to infer what God might be by distinguishing what God simply cannot be. Now, apophactic theology, or the use of common sense in discerning what God can't be, can take us only so far. I think it needs to be supplemented with something a little more positive, uh, with something with a little more content. And I would suggest, secondly, then, that we turn to an argument that's known as the analogy of being. This is an argument that was especially popular in the Middle Ages. Probably its most famous proponent is the uh, 12th century St. Thomas Aquinas, but it's still a very common argument today, and it's still a very strong argument today, the analogy of being. And the argument goes something like this. Just as a human artist leaves her signature or her style upon the artwork that she creates, so God, whom the Renaissance historian Vasari called the first artist, 
leaves a distinctive signature or style upon the creation that he makes. If we know how to read that creation and discern the creator's signature or style, we can infer from that something about the nature of the creator. So, for example, we look at the cosmos and we see that it's orderly and that it's uniform and that it possesses great beauty. And we can infer that the creator of this cosmos likewise possesses some characteristic that's analogous to the order and the uniformity and the beauty we discern in the world. Or we look at human beings. We know that we are made in the likeness and image of God, and we discern certain characteristics in ourselves, such as reason and love and generosity. Again, we can infer by analogy that the Creator has imprinted us with these characteristics and that these characteristics point to similar ones in the Creator. I mean, we must always recognize that there is a greater dissimilarity between the cosmos and the Creator than there is similarity. But nonetheless, we can analogously infer from an examination of the creation certain qualities that the Creator must possess. The third way in which we can know something about God is through our own personal illumination, each and every one of us probably has had at one time or another some kind of transcendent experience, an experience which persuades us that there is more to existence than the everyday shallowy surface upon which we normally float. These tokens of transcendence, as they're sometimes called, illuminate us and suggest to us that reality has a much greater depth than we could ever fathom without some kind of grace-inspired event. These moments of personal illumination, of course, should always be considered after the fact in relationship to scriptural authority and tradition, lest we fall into a kind of subjectivism uh, which has no correlation with the real world. But nonetheless, at least on the surface of things, I think they are immediately trustworthy and should be taken more seriously than we sometimes take them. So God is incomprehensible in that you and I will never be able to fathom uh, in its entirety the essence of God. But God is knowable through common sense, through analogy, and through scrutinized personal illuminatory experiences. Augustine goes on to say something else after his claim that if we comprehend it, it isn't God. And this is a portion of the uh, sermon in which he says that, which isn't quoted as often as it should be. He says that keeping in mind that God is incomprehensible saves us from the arrogance of thinking that God can be utterly and totally plumbed by our nature. It enables us to be humble enough to discern what we can discern about God. Let me close by invoking another foreign word. We started out with Latin comprehendus. Let me close with uh, reminding you of a Hebrew word, devikut, devikut. Uh, in the Hebrew scriptures, we are told that the proper relationship between human beings and God is one of devikut, which can be translated as cleaving to or clinging to. We cannot grasp God, but we can cling to God. We ought not try to clutch God intellectually, but we can cleave to God with our heart and our soul and our mind. That's the proper relationship of a human being to God, and that's the best way to learn something about God, to come to know something about God, cleaving to God in faith and hope and love. I'm Father Kerry Walters, my friends, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you next time.